My name is Michael and I am one of the PAs who work here in the robotics department. My talk is going to be on who PAs are and what are our roles in robotic surgery. Uh, if you come here and have surgery at NYU Lango and Health Long Island, uh, you're going to see one of our team members in your surgery. And just know when you see us, our goal and our main purpose is to make sure that you and your loved ones have the safest operation with the best surgical outcomes every single time. Uh, so we can skip over my introduction. Um, Ken was the one who recruited me ten year, uh, almost 10 years ago at this point. Uh, he really was the one who fostered in me my desire and um, love for education and for advocacy work. Uh, a lot of Ken's training uh, is really seen in my operative skills and those of my colleagues. So his memory and his uh, legacy live on through those of us that he has trained. So what is a PA? A uh, quick history about a PA. Uh, in the 1960s, there was noted to be a shortage in primary care. Uh, so a doctor by the name of Dr. Eugene Stead uh, developed the first PA program in 1967, was the first graduating class. There were four PAs at that time. They were all Navy corpsmen who came back from World War II with extensive medical training, but really nowhere to bring this, um, these skills that they had. Uh, the first PAs were licensed to practice in New York State in 1971, and we've been practicing alongside our physician colleagues ever since then. So, becoming a PA is no easy task. Our training is based off the medical school model of training and education. There's two ways of becoming a PA. You can either declare right from uh, high school, going into a direct entry program, or you can go the more traditional route where you complete four years of college and obtain a bachelor's degree, and then you apply to PA school afterwards. Regardless of the route that you choose, you do need to have previous healthcare experience before going into the field. All PA programs in the United States educate PAs to a master's level. There are an average of 27 months long with no breaks or summer sessions in between. It's a straight through run to the end. Uh, during that time, you have to complete a minimum of 2,000 clinical hours or about a full year of work before you're able to graduate. Upon graduating, we all have to pass a national board certifying exam similar to our physician colleagues. And then we have to maintain 100 hours of CME every two years and recertify every 10 years, which I'm going through currently. Our recertification exam is on general medicine. So although I have been in general surgery for almost a decade now, I do need to know everything from pediatric surgery, uh, pediatrics, all the way up to geriatric medicine. PAs who want to go on for additional certifications of additional qualification have that option. In addition to this, all the PAs who are trained here at NYU Langone Health Long Island go through an additional six months of dedicated robotic training before they're allowed to single-handedly assist on operations. As you can see, PAs practice in almost every specialty in medicine, with a majority of us uh, falling into the surgical subspecialties. Most do practice in outpatient facilities, while the next highest amount practice in hospitals. So let's meet our team team of nine dedicated robotic PAs, the majority of which have all been recruited and trained by Ken. All of us have been practicing for nearly a decade, and we average about 350 robotic cases a year. Because of this, we are now one of the most experienced, busiest, and safest robotic programs here on Long Island. It, and like I said before, if you're in one of our robotic cases, you're going to be one of these see one of these members of the team at your bedside. So why are PAs uniquely qualified for robotic surgery? Um, first off, we are trained in general medicine. Our license allows us to see patients in any specialty, in any age range, in any setting. So this allows us to jump between specialties. Last week, I covered cases in urology, gynecology, surgical oncology, and colorectal surgery. This allows me to see anatomy from multiple different vantage points. This allows me to see techniques from multiple different surgeons. And if something's not working out in the surgery, I can bring what I've seen to the surgeon and say, hey, why don't we try this approach? Or have you considered doing it this way? This is a collaborative uh, relationship that we have. And again, the whole goal is to provide the safest and excellent care for you and your loved ones. So we're pretty busy from the beginning of the surgery. We're, even before you come into the room, we're reviewing your history and your lab work. We're getting to know you. This allows us to identify any potential pitfalls before the surgery and come up with ways to avoid them and optimize the surgery. 
before you will be in the room before you or your loved one come and go to sleep and we'll be there to hold your hands and make sure you're comfortable as you go to sleep. We then get you into position. Each surgery has a different position and we have to be knowledgeable about optimizing this to make sure that not only are you comfortable but you are safe while you're asleep. We then help the surgeons start the procedure. And this may be one of the most intricate parts and important parts of what we do is the port placement. With traditional laparoscopic surgery and open surgery, you can move where your ports are placed. But once you're docked with the robot, those ports are in there permanently. And if the ports aren't in the most optimal position, you're going to have struggling throughout the case. This is where we take our experience, thousands upon thousands of hours, hundreds upon hundreds of cases, and we're able to help accurately identify the best positioning of these ports in order to make sure that these surgeries are able to run smoothly. We'll then go ahead and dock the robot, and we remain scrubbed at your bedside the whole time. So this is one of the things that we really want to demystify here, is that the robot is never operating independently. You will always have an expertly trained medical provider at your bedside at all times. You will never be alone during robotic surgery. I will be next to you, I promise. We stay scrubbed in. When we need to, we'll exchange the robotic instruments to keep the surgery moving forward. We know these surgeries, like Dr. Wenner alluded to, as well as the surgeons. This allows for minimal breaks in the surgical cadence, which leads to a decreased amount of complications and decreased operative time. We'll assist laparoscopically, passing necessary sutures and other materials in and out of the case, and we'll provide sectioning, retraction, and other laparoscopic assistance in order to create a visual field for the surgeons to operate in. If there are any specimens that do need to be removed at the end of the case, we'll remove them. And once everything is out of the body and in, we have taken account of everything, we'll go ahead and we will remove all of the ports and we'll close your incisions. Most of us, if not all of us, are very particular about this part of the surgery, making sure that you get a nice, class, a nice plastics closure so you have very minimal scarring. Once you've wakened up from anesthesia, we'll transport you to the recovery room and then we will transition your care to the next team. And then you'll hopefully go home within the next day or so. We have a collaborative relationship with our physicians. We're acting as a second set of eyes and ears throughout the surgery. We're watching for everything to make sure that you guys are safe at all times. We'll follow your blood work, your x-rays, and other special tests before and after the OR. And we cooperate with the surgeons. Like Dr. Winner said earlier, we've been involved in creating uh, these programs. Uh, my chief, Nick, has worked with Dr. Corcoran, who will be speaking soon, uh, with the development of the neobladder case. They worked very closely with that. I've worked with Dr. Winner on the Whipple and the, the right hepatectomy. Uh, and it's this collaborative input and this exchange of ideas that really allows us to be innovative and be at the cutting edge of robotic surgery here at Long Island. Um, we're a constant in these cases, right? You can't be performing complex surgery if there's a new person coming in every time. We're there, we know these cases, and we know what's safe. And therefore, when we bring in new surgeons to the fold, I think uh, someone said we have about 80 surgeons, they all have to start somewhere. We're there with them at the beginning. We're able to help uh, bring them on board. We're able to provide uh, input into techniques and critiques while they're going through that beginning learning curve, and we're able to see them become the expert surgeons that they are. So a quick summary of what the benefits of having a dedicated robotic PA program are is this prove efficacy and efficiency of the surgeries. This leads to improved cost effectiveness. We know the instruments, we're making sure that there's not any additional waste and this all gets reflected when you see that scary bill at the end of the surgery. Uh, there's decreased operative time due to less breaks in the case. Uh, this leads to, most importantly, decreased anesthesia time and quicker recovery. And overall, like I've said multiple times before, we lead to improved patient safety, and that is our ultimate goal. So thank you all for coming and for listening to me speak. <laughs>